Hey guys, now that we have covered the basics of AngularJS programming and that we know the fundamentals of application development using the framework, it is time to take a look at an important aspect we have been saving for last, testability. One of the fundamental reasons for choosing Angular is that it was designed and developed with automated testing in mind. Testing is a good approach to keep code maintainable, understandable and bug free. There are basically two different kinds of tests unit tests and end-to-end -end tests, that are sometimes referred as integration tests. Those two are very different things which serve different needs, but you need them both. Unit testing is a technique that helps developers validate isolated pieces of code. They're isolated from the world to make it easy to simulate weird error conditions. End-to-end -end tests verify that all the pieces fit together. We're no longer talking about code here. This is automated interaction with the user interfaces, which for web means HTML in a browser. In other words, the unit tests are supposed to test your code, the end-to-end -end tests are supposed to ignore the code and test your application on a black box approach. AngularJS is compatible with many different tools to deal with unit and end-to-end -end tests. In this course, however, since we're just starting out, we're going to focus on the tools officially supported by the Angular team. Those tools are called Karma and Protractor, test runners for unit and end-to-end -end tests respectively. Both tools are compatible with the Jasmine framework. Jasmine is a behavior-driven development framework for testing JavaScript code. It has a clean, obvious syntax so that you can easily write tests. When written with Jasmine, both unit and end-to-end -end tests have similar anatomy. A test suit is comprised of one or more it blocks that describes the requirement of your application. It blocks are made of commands and expectations. Commands tell the test runner, either karma or protector, to do something with the application, such as run a specific function or click on a link. Expectations tell the test runner to verify and validate aspects about the application state, such as the value of a variable on scope or an input on screen. In addition to the above elements, tests may also contain helper functions to avoid duplicating code in the it blocks. Let's now take a look at unit and end-to-end -end tests separately. First, we have unit tests. The core units which make up features should be verified with accompanying unit tests. In JavaScript apps, the smallest units of code you can test are usually individual functions, like a function that adds a list of numbers together, or sorts a list of strings, or change the state of a variable. From the user perspective, these units may be abstracted away from the app, they may even be unaware of this level of functionality happening on the background. Still, it's our job to verify that each of the chunks of our app work individually. Then we get to the end-to-end -end tests. Unit tests are the first line of defense for catching bugs, but sometimes issues come up with integration between components which can't be captured in a unit test. End-to-end -end tests are made to find these problems. Because of that, Angular team built Protractor, an end-to-end -end test runner which simulates user interactions that will help you verify the health of your Angular application. Protractor is a Node.js program and runs end-to-end -end tests that are also written in Jasmine. Protractor uses WebDriver to control browsers and simulate user actions. In other words, it tests your application by running test scripts on top of the browser, exactly as a real user would execute the tests. When it comes to automated testing, there are two dominant approaches about how to write tests and when to write tests. The first approach is called Test Driven Development or TDD. Test-driven development is a development process that relies on the repetition of a very short development cycle. First, you write an automated test case that defines a desired improvement or new function that will obviously fail since you didn't code the functionality yet, then you proceed to implement the expected behavior to make the test pass. The second approach is usually referred as test after development or TAD, which is basically the opposite approach. Write your code first, and then your tests. Despite being a great TDD enthusiast and advocate, I'm not here to preach about which approach is better for your needs. In this course, for example, we're going with the TAD approach because I think it's the best way to learn a framework. 
even considering TDD to be the best approach when it comes to a real-world development cycle. In the end, it all depends on the requirements of your project. In the next video, we're going practical and start writing unit tests to validate the application we developed on section 3. I see you guys there.